The other day I talked about orthorexia, right? And I discussed what it is and you know, why it's of concern. And so I recommend going to watch that video that we post on Friday, because it goes into a lot of detail about what orthorexia is, and again, why it's concerning. But just a quick summary, what orthorexia is, is actually an obsession with eating healthy, okay? And so what that means is that people will get to a point where they're so obsessed with eating healthy that it restricts and restricts and restricts the amount of food that they're allowed to eat because maybe it's not clean enough, okay? So this case study that we're gonna go over today is actually an example of exactly that, right? Now this particular individual is five foot two and 127 pounds, okay? And so how this kind of orthorexic tendency for her started was actually with just an idea to start eating a little bit healthier. So she was someone who had a pretty physically demanding job. Her schedule was a little wonky. It wasn't the exact same schedule every day. So she didn't really have good routine. And so what would happen is she would do grab and go stuff, which, okay, fine, that fit with her lifestyle. But she didn't like that. She felt like she didn't have as good energy as she could have and she wanted to change that. So at first what she tried to do is actually start eating more vegetables. Okay, great, fine, right? And then she started to do more cooking at home for herself, also fine. But then what happened, she started doing more online research. <laughs> and so I'm not saying that the information, all information online is bad, but as you know, you can get into a rabbit hole online to find some pretty conflicting and actually bad nutrition information. So that's kind of what happened for this individual. What was happening is she was finding completely conflicting information. She would find one group of people that said, this food is great, but then she would find another group that said, oh no, that food's gonna kill you or whatever it is, which of course, neither one of those are true, but that's what was happening. And so at first, this idea to start eating a little bit healthier then snowballed into eating less and less and less because of all this research that she was doing. And so what she actually found is that by the time she came to see me, the only thing that she was eating was plant-based proteins and vegetables that when she was cooking them, she would cook in water. She wouldn't use even a spray or any sort of fat because she thought that that was bad for you and it was a waste of fat, that the only fat that you should be getting was should be coming from avocado, which again is not true. So. When we did this person's metabolic test, you'll see that it was really impacted from this low intake of just the plant-based protein and vegetables. So as you can see here, her metabolism had dropped pretty low, right? It's down at a thousand, which is well below where it should be. And her protein substrate was 12% above normal, meaning that the body was breaking down way too much of her lean mass. Now this of course was because her calorie intake was so low from only eating vegetables and plant-based proteins that her metabolic rate and protein substrate were affected. Now this is not good. We don't want her to stay in this place. This is the body compensating for being under-fueled. We can't let her stay here because this is gonna have some long-term effects like, again, potentially low bone density, poor energy, poor immunity. The other things, and she was experiencing these things, but these are also common indicators of a low metabolic rate or high protein substrate, is either off hunger, meaning you're hungry all the time, or you're never hungry, cravings for carbs and sweets, and poor sleep. All of those can be an indicator that these things are going on here. So what did we do for this individual? Of course, first, we actually had to do a lot of nutrition education. So one of the biggest things with individuals with orthorexia is their educated in a sense, meaning they've done a lot of research into nutrition, but unfortunately, a lot of the information that they've gotten has been false or it's common nutrition myths that they have fallen into. So at my role as the dietitian is actually to try and debunk some of those myths, to actually educate them on why you need carbohydrates, why you need fat. For this particular individual, she wasn't plant-based for any sort of ethical reasons. She had done that because she thought it was gonna be an easier way to eat clean. So for this person, we actually challenged her to start adding in a little bit more protein that was animal-based. So she started doing some eggs and uh, fish because that was stuff that she had really liked before. Now, speaking of liking it, that's the other thing that we have to do with orthorexia is kind of bring back the enjoyment around food. So what happens is sometimes people get so obsessed with being healthy that they forget that food is allowed to be enjoyed. And so for this person, not only did we work on changing some of those nutrition myths that she had learned, but also, teaching her that it's okay to sometimes just eat a cupcake, not necessarily because 
you know, you need sugar or something, I don't know, but because you just want the cupcake. Food is also cultural and it's allowed to be enjoyed and liked as opposed to just a necessity. So with this person, we did see some great success with that. As you can see here, after correcting a lot of those things, her metabolic rate is now normal. Her protein substrate is now normal. Now we're still working on a couple of things with her, right? It's not like all of this just changed overnight. This has been a long time coming. There's still some foods that she's a little hesitant to eat, but she has given herself so much more food freedom. She's now allowing herself to eat carbohydrates and realizes that those are a good fuel for the exercise that she's doing. She She's still cooking stuff at home and preparing vegetables and doing things that she wanted to do when she started out with this goal, but it's no longer an obsession and it's something that she's doing because she knows it fuels her body well. Now, if you feel like this is something that you or a friend is struggling with, I definitely recommend you pass on this video. In the comments, tell us some of the myths that you've heard about nutrition that maybe you still believe or ones that you have learned are not so true anymore. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.